Hi fellow paper crafters, I'm Melissa Kerman and I'm going to share my black ice technique with you today. It's my favorite new technique and was developed in collaboration with my mom. Shown here are the supplies I'll be using for today's project and the most important supplies are the Versamark clear embossing powder heat tool and the black stays on. You can also use archival black ink as an alternative to stays on and of course you'll need some kind of stamps. So for today's project, uh, instead of using a single sheet of foil paper, I'm using three panels that I'm going to stamp on at the same time and uh, then the end product, um, I'm going to separate them. So I'm starting with some temporary adhesive on each of the panels and just nesting them one against the other. So once my pieces are in place, I just want to make sure they're going to stay um, and not move uh, during the next step in the process. So I'm taking a piece of cardstock and just making sure they're um, on the work surface securely. And then I try to avoid getting fingerprints on my foil to some extent as much as I can. So I'm using uh, that piece of cardstock again uh, to hold them down and just make sure that they don't move. Um, and at the same time, just streaking the black along the silver foil and attempting to get a little bit of a black edge, um, as you can see right there, on the left and right side. So I'm going to come in and do the left side next. So the next step is I'm going to go straight into doing my stamping. And I've used four images from the Rooted in Nature stamp set. Um, two of these uh, delicate looking leaves and then two other images. And I'm just speeding through this portion um, because it really is just uh, straight up stamping, kind of just getting my composition as I want it. And now I'm coming in with the actual fourth image. So after all the stamping is done, it's important to uh, dry the ink on the surface. So I'm using my heat tool on a low setting and just making sure that that black ink is dry. If you don't do that, uh, in the next step, those images will get blurry. You'll sort of pull out um, the ink uh, and I've actually tested it and it actually does that. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad next and ever so delicately I'm going to uh, just with the weight of the pad itself uh, delicately let it fall against the surface of the foil sheet. Um, this piece um, or part of the process is really pretty crucial for getting um, the effect of the black ice. So you may know that Versamark is a clear, sticky ink. So when you're applying the Versamark, you really can't see how much is going on, which makes it a little bit tricky. Um, but if you do that super extra light touch, as I was describing it, um, it should uh, work. So now, of course, I'm putting the clear embossing powder on each of the panels. I'm going to do it them one at a time. And I'm being careful not to get my um, fingers too much on the surface, um, just so that I don't get any fingerprints um, in there. So no two black ice projects are exactly the same um, and uh, they're beautiful in their own way. However, there is to me a signature black ice look and it features uh, linear ice-like uh, droplets in streaks across the shiny foil surface. And so that's generally what I'm trying to achieve and um, one of the things I love about the technique. So now I'm coming in with my heat tool and uh, heating that clear embossing powder on the surface of each of the three panels. And um, this is where the magic begins because you can see the streaks that you created um, with uh, the Versamark as you rubbed it against the surface. So all that's really left to do now is to uh, assemble the card. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did for the rest of the card, but uh, then I'm going to focus a little bit on just telling you about the technique itself and some of the nuances to help you be successful. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm just creating my sentiment piece. I've used my ovals, um, my layering ovals framelits and stitched edged framelits, and I've already cut those out and I've stamped my sentiment on a piece of silver foil. Um, I'm making a little embellishment for in behind the sentiment and I've just taken some silver thread, wrapped it around my finger several times. Uh, I put adhesive on the back side of that um, black scallop piece, of course, first. 
And as you can see, I have some dimensionals already put on um, another black scallop piece that I've prepared ahead of time, and I'm just attaching my sentiment um, to that piece. And then all I have to do is um, put that aside, of course, and get the rest of the card ready, and my embellishment for the front will be all done. So um, I'm going to start assembling the card, but while I do that, I just want to talk to you about uh, the technique itself. So um, in the uh, materials and supplies list I indicated you can use both stays on and black archival ink and um, they're each a little bit different. Stays on is a bit of a stickier ink and um, than the archival black and you, you can use both. Now when I did my project here in front of you I used my stays on pad that you see there and it's actually a kind of a roughed up stays on pad because I've used it a lot for my impressions of tarnished foil technique which um, where you're rubbing the stays on against um, an embossing folder and it's roughed up the edges so I didn't get as clean a streak on my uh, focal pieces as I might have liked. Um, I found that I can get a cleaner streak with the archival black now, if I had a brand new stays on a pad, it probably would have just been fine. Um, and there are pros and cons to both, um, as I've said, but you can really use both. So um, the the streaks in the background, the black streaks, actually sort of off offset the streaks that you're creating with the clear embossing powder. And so uh, they almost create a shadow, sort of, and help you see um, the black ice element, the the actual clear embossing powder over the top. Um, so the streaks are actually really important um, for getting the end result. The other thing is that um, using less images on your silver piece actually allows you to see the black ice effect better. Um, so when you're using a lot of images like I did here, it's a little bit more difficult to really uh, see the effect and the nuance of it. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures of uh, close-ups of um, uh, some black ice uh, cards I've done where I really uh, got the true uh, black ice effect that I'm generally looking for when I do this technique. So here's my final card and a couple of close-ups. And then I also have one other card I've created with this same stamp set, Rooted in Nature. This is the next one here. This is a very simple card, but there's a lot of the silver foil showing, so you're able to see the black ice effect here a whole lot better. On this card, I've also used my archival black ink, which gave me a little more control over my streaks. You may have been able to see it there. This next card is um, my very first black ice technique card. And here's a close-up so you can really see the effect on the bottom of this card. This next card was also one of my very first, and I absolutely love this close-up that's coming because it shows the effect so well. So on these next few cards, I'm showing some variations of things you can do with the black ice. So this one is done on copper foil paper. And this one I've heat embossed with gold embossing powder and then created the um, black ice effect. And on this last one, I have eliminated the black altogether and colored in my image using the blends alcohol markers. I hope you've enjoyed my project and technique today and will check out my blog and YouTube channel for more fun project ideas. Have a great day and happy crafting.